welcome to the second episode of the Kashmir Chronicles. In this episode, I'm going to share with you my collection of antique Kashmiri paper mache. This collection is pretty special to me because my ancestors were paper mache artists and my father, along with his brother, built a very successful paper mache business and took it to a legendary status with his business acumen, attention to detail and the quality of his craftsmanship. It is a bitter irony that while I did little to carry on his legacy, I now acquire every single piece that I can find with his label on it. One of the things I want to point out here is that for the Kashmiri version of this art form, the word paper mache might be a misnomer. It is true that like in other parts of the world, the articles are made of ground paper pulp and sometimes wood, but the similarities end there. That is because for the Kashmiri paper mache, making the article is only a first of a series of painstaking steps that prepare it for the final and the principal character in the story, the artist or the naqash. With a very fine brush, the naqash of the bygone era would sketch and then paint intricate patterns, mostly depicting local flora, paintings from Hindu and Mughal manuscripts, and the very dominant shawl pattern using ground stone colors, natural pigments, and 24 karat gold leaf paint, all of which he prepared himself. He sealed his work with several layers of lacquer, a final act which, as you can see in my collection, helped protect his work and retain the brilliance of his colors for over two centuries. As reported by an English traveler in the 1820s, one of the most popular items of Kashmiri paper mache was the qalamdan or pen case. So much so that paper mache began to be called as kari qalamdan, which loosely translates as the art of the qalamdan. The paper mache turban box, which interestingly was too small to hold an actual turban, represents some of the finest examples of Kashmiri paper mache from the early 1800s. Inside of the turban box, the artists would painstakingly paint them on the inside and in some cases embellish the bottom as well. Badum, or the so-called paisley, the dominant pattern of the Kashmir shawls, had an influence on the design aesthetic of every art form of Kashmir. Paper mache, of course, was no exception. With characteristic dexterity, the paper mache artist of Kashmir adopted this pattern to the size and scale of his canvas and gave us some of the finest examples of Kashmiri paper mache.
Most common paper mache patterns that retain their popularity to this day depict the local flowers and birds of Kashmir. For the artist of the bygone era, this was a very natural response to the world that he lived in. His was a world where tulips grew on rooftops and irises covered every cemetery, where every summer the meadows and valleys were carpeted with wildflowers, where delicate blossoms of apple, peach, almond and cherry filled the orchards in spring, and where rows of flower beds bordered the water canals and fountains in the royal gardens that were laid out by the Mughal emperors in the 17th century. Another influence that I see in my paper mache collection is that of the shapes and decorative elements of Islamic architecture. Yet again, the Kashmiri artist adapted it ever so skillfully to the size and scale of the objects that he was painting. Today, we associate the figural work in Kashmiri paper mache with scenes of battles, royal hunts, and depictions of the Darbar or the king's court. That was not always the case. I was fortunate to find some rare examples of paper mache from the 1800s that depict scenes from Hindu manuscripts as well as manuscripts that contain distinctly Kashmiri elements such as the musical instrument Tumaknur, the Kashmiri portable heater the Kangar, and Hakat, a simple folk dance for the lack of a better term. Most interesting to me are the ones that depict women in non-traditional roles such as riding horses and participating in hunts. There's even an example that depicts women as mythical forms of good and men as fearful incarnations of evil. As the influx of Western tourists increased, Kashmiri paper mache began to appear on a whole new set of utilitarian objects designed exclusively for the foreign buyers. This included office desk sets, complete with a letter box, an inkstand and a paper knife, book covers, and the most interesting of all, a fully functioning pair of bellows for the fireplace. <music> 